when we abstain from sex and start the spiraling journey into ourselves, it's one that feels amazing. But it's often a challenge to integrate someone else into that amazing feeling without feeling like there's something being tainted or someone else was taking something away from our experience. If you feel like now may be a good time to get into a different chapter of intimacy with your partner. I hope this video gives you some reassurance in a very confusing time. In this video, I will describe signs within myself that let me know that I was ready for the new chapter in my relationship. Hopefully with what I say and what I share, it is of service to you in any way. So, let's get started. Whether you are a male or a female in the history book of intimacy in your own life, isn't it funny how every year is like a new chapter and it always feels like something different? When we were younger, sex just seemed like the thing to do and it was also very surface level. And the more that we discover what we truly are as humans and what we're made to feel and all of the sensations that exist within us, it's brought to my attention that it's just so much deeper. We discover intimacy becomes so much more. It's not just sex, it could also become ritualistic or it has the power to manifest or destroy someone. And as much as society tries to desynthesize us with it by forcing it down our throats or, or downplaying it and making it so normalized that we don't really take it as something important at all, I think deep down we can feel the impact. And I don't think this is a conversation that should be taken lightly, so that's why I'm trying to handle this with as much care as I possibly can. More than 1.5 million women and over 837,000 men experience some type of sexual violence annually. And that's just in the USA alone. And I will say that if you are someone that is experiencing some type of sexual trauma and trying to go through the healing process of that, I'll make sure to share some links below that could possibly be of service to you in this time. This is how I knew I was ready. When it comes down to a topic as sensitive as sex, I knew getting into a new relationship that I wanted to be intentional, but I also knew how important it was for me to be ready on my own and standing firm in what that means to me. If oftentimes we are rushed to feel ready because of the guilt we experience for putting our partners through our own dry spell, we're not ready. And if you're being honest, if that is how you feel, you also are not ready. You're just being nice and you're not being authentic. And most people, pleasers and empaths, take on the emotions of others so well and uncontrollably that we will act in the best interest of others, even if it is a betrayal to ourselves in the end. And this is when the work is deeper, because we realize at some point that we are responsible for what we allow, or because we assume that if we find that person, if we meet that right one, then these feelings will just flow into natural sexual chemistry, and sometimes it does. But what if it doesn't? There's just so much more to explore. There was a part of me that felt it was fair to open the door for this person that was pursuing me to be intimate with other people. If you wanted me in your life, there was ways that you can experience me because I am a full person. We could get to know each other. We could have more conversations. And I didn't feel like it was fair that because we didn't share the same physical urges that he should stop doing the things that were fulfilling to him. And I encourage everyone to open the door of, hey, you aren't getting it for me, so I want you to follow your heart. And when you do that, you also observe and have more insight, more information to pull from. It also comes with the detachment of no one belongs to you and we can't punish the people we have interest in because they aren't on the same journey that we are on. And that is often a hard pill to swallow, but it's fair. And if we love a person, we can't suffocate them with our expectations and our own limitations. In my experience, I've learned that maybe waiting longer saves you more time in the long run because maybe the few months are easy to pretend to be patient for someone. 
And I'm curious what waiting a full year would entail. But that's just me and my own curiosity. I feel like maybe if I sought genuine friendship for a year, just how far I would feel into the relationship if I decided to move forward or in the opposite direction. Would I be more clear in who I thought this person was for me had I just waited a full year outside of being intimate? In the reality of abstaining from sex and then making a decision to have sex again, there's always this fear of that next person not being the right person and we have to kind of allow that to be true and also allow mistakes to happen because that's a process of life. I'm not saying once you're ready to have sex, you just have sex with anyone. Um, but if that is what you feel like you want to do, that's also your prerogative. I think what keeps us waiting longer when we know we're ready for something more is the fear that we're going to make a, the same mistakes with the next person that we've made with the last people. And there's this large lack of trust that we have within ourselves about the decisions we make about the people that we have in our lives because of how we feel they have caused us pain or how we feel certain relationships have ended or started. And in reality, that type of control is sabotaging and say the next person you do have sex with is not the right person, so what? You know now for sure what you want. It's going to lead you closer to what you actually want and we shouldn't be frightened by the decisions or by the experiences in our life that happen by chance, but also by some divine order that teaches us more lessons about one, who we are, who we want to be, and what we want to attract into our lives. And um, I know it's such a scary time to open yourself up to a level of vulnerability with someone new, you know, someone that is a stranger, someone that you've known for a while. I mean, once you know a person on that level, it's kind of hard to go back, which is why they say friends with benefits isn't really friends, you know? I just want you to, before you make the decision, take a deep breath and just trust yourself or just experience life and allow life to happen to you. I think in my experiences, I was so clenching, I was so tight, I was so afraid for things to happen to me that I would look back and be like, dang, I, I wish I'd have, I would have surrendered to the moment more. Maybe I would have had a better recollection or better memory of what actually transpired in that if I wasn't so uptight, wasn't always bracing myself for something bad happening. And um, if I could be a sister to you, I would want you to learn from my mistakes, male or female. You know, there's so many things to discover within yourself. Maybe if it's maybe actually pursuing your sexual desires with a man for the first time and you are a guy, even if it's a mistake, wouldn't you much rather prefer existing in the truth of what you actually are than waiting years in this discomfort of not ever knowing? You know, I mean, hey, I can't force anyone to jump off a bridge, and nor do I want to be that type of person. But coming from my experience of allowing a lot of life to pass me by with not many experiences under my belt because of fear, um, I just want you to go after everything, you know? I think I needed to really get to know myself. In the time of abstaining from intimacy with the men, I used a lot of that time to keep the intimacy with myself popping. And it was absolutely amazing. And I encourage every person to have a strong, intimate relationship with themselves because that is your power. You know, when we wait for someone outside of ourselves to come in and be the bringer of pleasure, it completely disconnects you from that power. There should be no one in the world that is able to nurture you the way that you do yourself. And in discovering what you like and what you don't like, you're a better advocate for yourself when you start to collaborate with your own intimacy. 
and even being in a relationship like I it was very hard for me to navigate the, my intimacy time with myself when I'm existing with someone else and also they are like I'm supposed to be intimate with them but it's like as a woman you still have to find those times to yourself and there should be a balance and I think for a lot of times I was feeling just not myself I was I felt the disconnection with myself because I wasn't being intimate with myself and that doesn't go away even when you decide to have partnership if anything it elevates the experience that you should have with your partner when you are keeping in tune with yourself and I know that was a little rated R you know what I'm saying but it's um it's the truth and I think to be a hundred percent real I had to let go of my past in a real way and I think when a person experiences sexual trauma it can leave effects in ways that you don't necessarily expect um, if you're aware of the book, The Body Keeps the Score, it's about how trauma and our experiences store pockets of energy in our bodies and it may result in ailments or posture changes, even emotional triggers. And in my opinion, sexual energy, positive or negative, affects a lot. And I remember when I was younger, after my experience with sexual violence and moving on from that at such a young age, and I remember the next person that I had sex with after that. Now, it had been months to a year after that experience before I allowed someone in my space where I was open to be intimate with them again. And I was just so uptight. I was so anxious. I even remember crying from just the disgusting feeling that someone else was taking something from me again and there was just a lack of control felt or an inability to be vulnerable because of the consequence that I experienced from being vulnerable in the presence of a monster. And because I felt unsafe most times, it took a while for me to discover safety within my own body or what it means to be safe within my own body again. And because I was not aware at the time, everyone that I encountered in a way felt like the same monster. And I just developed a strong distrust for men and a really large disgust for men that led to me questioning my own sexuality. Like, I know that they're cute, but there's something that I despise about them. And I don't think that that was healthy. So I was like, okay, I think, you know, something needs to happen. I, I needed to be able to move on from that. And, um, once you realize certain things aren't healthy and once you're aware that certain things aren't healthy, that's when you kind of move forth to going about changing and growing. And I had to realize that even though I felt like these people were monsters, these men were evil, that wasn't the truth. It's just what the pain and the disappointment manifest itself into my body as. And this is also something I still work on until this day. And although I'm a lot better than I was, I'm nowhere near fully recovered from that. And it's okay. And I don't think we're supposed to judge ourselves for where we are in our journeys with intimacy. And we shouldn't give others room to allow their judgments to affect our pace when it comes to how we're healing from certain things with intimacy. Um, so I know that was a really loaded, loaded, loaded conversation, but I definitely felt it needed to be had because, you know, life's, people be going through stuff, like, life is real, like, things, there's, there's so many women that have experienced some type of weirdo stuff when it comes to sex and we talk about it in small groups and we are able to connect with one another about things that have happened to us. But at the same time, um, I don't know, I kind of want to 
raise my voice to it as well and be a part of the conversation if you have never been in spaces where people have spoken about this um because i know it's youtube and everything's super fun here and everyone wants to talk about other things um so i hope this conversation wasn't too triggering for you honestly it's not my intention to judge or make you feel bad or you know bring you back to certain moments in your life that are triggering because i know my conversations do that and if they do bring you back to those times i want you to know it's because i want to kind of i want you to i want to kind of bring you closer to forgiving and forgiveness and in order to really look at it we have to pull it up see it for what it is to let it go and um that's my purpose in doing this so i apologize if any of this has triggered you it's very triggering for me even in having the conversation i feel myself getting a little choked up but then i have to remember it's for it's to be of service you know and that's what i'm here to do with that being said if you are someone that started your celibacy journey in the effect of some type of sexual violence or sexual assault I want you to watch this video and maybe with what I shared today you feel something maybe less alone maybe more seen maybe motivation to move forward in the area of intimacy in your life so that you're not clinging on to the things that have hurt you or damaged you in your past or giving you the reassurance that maybe it is time to talk to someone about it so wherever you are in your journey whether you've met someone and it's too early to decide if taking that next step is something that needs to happen. Whether you met someone, did explore intimacy with that person and realize that that person is out of alignment with you. I want to encourage you to keep living, keep growing, keep evolving into yourself. You're doing great. I love you and I hope this video reaches you in some kind of way and that is able to make you feel better about any decision that you make in the future. I think that's all that I have today. Thank you guys so much for liking, commenting, and subscribing. Thank you so much for sharing your testimonies and anything that you may feel about the videos that I've shared with you on this platform. It means so much to me. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day or night, and I hope to see you guys in my next one. Bye.